What's going on, everybody? Morning, happy fly day. Woohoo! It's fly day, we made it to another Friday. Except so today, I'm not tying a fly. Some of you may or may not know, I'm still in sling. Cast, sorry, not sling. So, sorry, I forgot to write my phone off. So, today we're going to talk uh, musky. More particular, musky flies. I had some guys ask me questions about some flies. Uh, yes, I tie musky flies, and uh, but you can't right now, clearly. So, I want to discuss a few patterns that I tie that uh, over the years of fly fishing musky are probably you used to tie all kinds of flies double hooks, triple hooks, all kinds of weird things. I'm down to like probably three or four different kinds of musky flies um, and just tie those and get better at it and change the colors and make colors. Um, most of my flies are natural color, like behind me on the wall there. There's quite a few, those are all musky flies up there. And I have another two more boxes uh, full as well. And uh, so I tie a lot of musky flies. Anyways, they're time consuming and taking an hour to tie one-ish, give or take. Which uh, I, I'm sure you could find a million videos on YouTube about how to tie these musky flies. So I will spare you that uh, hour long video. Um, there's some really good tires there. Are. Some of my influencers are like Blaine Chocolate, of course. Um, and um, the guys in the Northwoods, Primo Tail, Brad Bowen. Everybody knows Brad Bowen, right? He's one of my... Uh, those two guys I look up to and kind of kind of cross their two flies, like Brad Bowen's uh, fur feather flash technique, mixed with uh, some of uh, Blaine Chocolate's like T-bone fly, for example. The T-bone fly is one of my uh, probably not my all-time favorite flies to tie. Do the Ottima Swine. That's also another awesome pattern um, for flies. And then there's the Beast fly, and there's there's all there's so many different kinds of different kinds of flies. So it's just easier to take two or three different patterns, learn how to tie them good, because it takes time to tie, and just tie whatever color you like. If you are just new to musky fishing, um, it's easier to start just with natural. Uh, match the hatch. Uh, perch, suckers, bass, maybe walleye, you know, food source kind of thing. And then you want to throw a couple bright ones in there just to mix it up. Like one of my bright two go-to colors is, um, especially up here in Ontario, is black and orange. This is like a 12 inch fly. It's got one hook on it. It is a combination of a, um, hang time minnow with a uh, t-bone cut across and I found this giant body tubing for the head to, it's kind of similar to the guys that tie the Buford pattern um, I like the Buford pattern uh, but I found this plastic pushes more water with less weight and I can get away throwing this on a lighter rod or I, I don't have to work so hard to, to cast it so that's that's one of my go-to colors are there t-bone meets hang time like a minnow uh, it's got two shanks on it, the body tubing, and then a single uh, six hot hook in the back. It's like 12 inches. Right? The other pattern, like I mentioned earlier, was the Ottima Swine. Here's one in a bluegill pattern I made. Bluegill Ottima Swine. It's a single six hot hook with a um, popper body on it, bass popper on reverse, and rattles. I use the. Um, a lot of guys tie the rattles on the actual hook, and I find that dulls the sound it. I actually found some rattles that are actually made for flipping jigs for bass fishing and they have basically two rattles on it and the silicone and the hole I just tie it to the actual shank of the thing and then the back ones just basically dangle in the back let's see if I can see this here, hold on oh, give me a second my hand here, hold on there two rattles off the back of this fly in silicone um, so there's a lot going on in this fly really it's a big fly, it's probably in the 8 inch to 9 inch mark but it's only one hook on it. And you can throw this base comfortably on a nine weight. If you want to run in a nine weight, um, you can throw this on a nine weight. If it gets a little windy, it might be tough, but you can, this is de definitely doable. This is not a hard tie. It's basically some uh, SF flash in the back, some bucktail, a couple of feathers, and um, some flash. And that's pretty much it. I put a little bit of fox fur on the head and the belly to get the, the kind of bluegill effect. That's kind of uh, a new color I made up uh, last year or year before, the bluegill. Ottima Swine pattern. Awesome fly, awesome pattern. Eli Brandt's pattern. Uh, Shout out to him. Thanks, Eli, for the uh, you know the fly. But it's an awesome pattern if you're just getting started. It's not complicated. You don't have to worry about body tubing. If you're going to tie a fly for musky to start with, it would be like a hang tank Ottima from Brad Bowen or this Ottima Swine. They're the easier, they're still hard, complicated patterns to tie, but they're easier to tie than messing with tubing and everything else. And then the tubing, if you're not new to a fly tying, 
it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be challenging. Just take some time to work with it. Uh, and not all tubing is created equal. I found tubing somewhere else was not the same tubing. I tried it. It's okay. It's not as durable. Uh, doesn't act the same. It's kind of a pain. You know what? Uh, and then I found some other tubing that works really good. And then the actual buy tubing on, online from the actual flying fishing company. If you can find that, it works pretty good too. But if you had to just start now, Optima Swine color. Take a pick a pattern. Fire Tiger, Sucker, whatever color you want. White, white is an awesome color for elf for flies as well. Do that. That's no that new recommendations. So like white. I have like I don't know ten different co kinds of white flies. Like I have like two or three in my box because whenever, whenever else is not working, this little small well I shouldn't say small like nine inch white fly is probably seen more fish than all my other flies combined. That in black and orange. White is awesome. Just pure white. A little bit of uh, barred markings in there for the some hackle feathers and and flash. I, not a lot of flash, but probably more than I would put on most natural flies. But I wanted to be able to see it for miles, and it wiggles. It's got two shanks, body tubing, and again a uh, an eight. So this is an eight all this time instead of a six. T bone fly. That's my other one. I like. And then you can go. The other one is the uh, beast fly, which is also kind of a you know what to tie. Um, this is like a eight inch fly. It's got a one single hook in the front. Versus the back of my hook, so the hook one only one hook in the back. This is a, I think a six aught, and uh, tied on a piece of hundred pound mono on the body. This is a rainbow trail pattern. Um, pretty good looking fly. It works good in the water, just like a droop bait action, like a um, like a phantom or a um, glide, any kind of glide bait, any action. And a marabou and the tail, uh, the marabou, the deer tail is uh, got the loss, as long as you get the right material, works really good and it moves really good, especially in the current. It works awesome. But it's really hard to tie. So if you're just starting out, it's probably not the one you want to start with. That's it's probably not the one. The other one is like a Buford style pattern. This is a really small pattern, like when it's cold front or early season. This is like a seven inch, six inch fly, and uh, with the head on it, right? So I got a five lot single hook. This is a good pattern too. It's like a droop bait action, it's a single. Um, sometimes when the fish are picky or cold front and high water or cold water, everything else, this is a fly to use. This is, this is a good one, this is a good one to tie. Beeford, look at the single Beeford. That's a good one. If you're starting out, that's the one to tie. Absolutely. Get started, right? Not get frustrated. And then the other one that no one uses a lot, well, not that around here, it uses a whole lot, is a, is a two fly. It's got one of those big, huge giant tails on it. It's a giant fly, but it's no weight to it. So if it's really windy out and you're having a hard time fighting casting all day, it's probably half the weight as the rest of the flies. And it's still a big profile. And this is a fire tiger pattern, and it's got a single lot, six lot. In the back, and I have put these uh, wiggle tails in the back of it. I'm on the fence with wiggle tails. Sometimes they are good, and sometimes they're not. Uh, I think where I fish is so much pressure, and all the, everybody else throws wiggle tails like bulldogs and stuff like that. Conventional. I don't have a whole lot of luck with the um, tails. When I go to different new water, that's not so pressured. They seem to work a little better. Definitely good for pike, that's for sure. And, the, and the, when the water's cold, there's something, something on there. So, two fly. Try if you haven't tried two fly. It's pretty much the same as a hook, except that of being on a hook, it's on a tube. You don't need a special device or anything, you just get a cheap adapter, like 20 bucks. Tie the tube on it, tie the fly, same as always. And the good thing about the tube fly is the hook slides out. Looks like I flooded out. The hook slides up the, up the line, and then you, the fly basically is up here. And then you don't have to worry about being, uh, get the fly getting beat up. It lasts longer. So, um, I run usually two rods musky fishing, I'll run a nine weight. For my smaller flies in the springtime of the year or cold front situations and then i'll bring them my level weight as well for big flies 500 green lines uh and i'm good to about when the wind picks up to about 40k once 40k hits kind of the i'm pushing my limit of my gear and my casting and my giant flies and then i'll downsize maybe to a smaller fly well not small fly but an eight inch fly versus a 12 or 14 inch fly so that's what i use for gear if you're gonna buy one rod kind of do all, everything else and then might use it for say uh, bass or poppers or anything else buy a 10 weight if you want to go musky and just strictly musky, uh, go, go 11 or 12. But if you want to do a purpose and you're only going to do it a couple times a year, definitely go with 10 weight. Uh, all right. So as far as leaders go, it's pretty much pretty simple. I always run sinking line. You can run intermediate if you want it, but I think type 5, type 6 uh, sinking line. 500 grain on my 11 weight, 350 grain on my 9 weight. Uh, I want the fly to get down there. And if it's fishing in shallow water, just fish it faster to get down there. Um, some of the flies that, I, that you tie, some will, some will suspend, especially the Optimus Swine with a popper on there, it'll definitely suspend and it'll stay there if you want it to. 
and the uh, other ones kind of either slow, fall really slow, fall really slow, or kind of nosedive, depending if you have a fish mask on or not. But I always run sticky line. It makes my life easier. Uh, shallow water just run faster, and deeper water obviously you want to get down there anyways. And if it's in a current, you want it to fly to get down there. Unless you want to run two rods, unless you run two, then you put a floating one on whatever else. But you want to hit them on top water. But I find the fish are usually down there deep anyways, and if you fish faster, they're going to come up and smoke it anyways. So there's two ways for leader. So basically, I run a 40 pound, 40 pound chameleon for right to my uh, fly line, and then I'll do a loop on the end, so I can change the leader easy, easier. So if I fish a lot of plate areas with trees, I'll run 40, and then I'll piece of put like piece of 20, like this much 20 on it, just so if I hook up into a tree or get snagged, that at least I can break it off. It sucks losing a fly, but at least you're not losing all your fly line and everything else, break it off. So. Chameleon for most of my fishing, uh, like weeds and stuff, this is awesome. Uh, deep water, open water, it's cool. But then if you fish shallow water, which most of us, the times I, if I can, I can fish, uh, fish shallow water, and clear water, like we're talking visibility, it's like 10 or 12 feet, I'll run uh, 40 pound fluorocarbon in maximum as well. 40 pound fluorocarbon, and then the same thing if I'm fishing areas with trees or stuff, I'll run 20 in, in front of that as well. In front of, it's easier to break 20 than 40. And then for pike guard, I either do two things. A lot of guys I know have gone wire. I had never had a problem with um, running uh, fluorocarbon. Um, so I run fluorocarbon. Then maybe I think it's some of the times it's efficient if I'm behind and crumples the whole fly up and then eats, it bites off to 20 in front of it, which is why I usually just run straight 40 if I to get away with it. So extra insurance. An arm length, arm length of 40, and then tie my loop to loop connection on each end, and then I run some 80 pound fluorocarbon on one end or um, 100 pound fluorocarbon. Depending when you're fishing. Most times I'll just run 100 just just because and if uh, I'm not getting any bites or the guy in front of me is using uh, 80 or something different than I am then I'll switch to 80 but 90% of the time I'm running a 100 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, usually Seaguar. Uh, I've tried other fluorocarbons before in the, in the past uh, they're okay, this seems to tie better. 80 pound or 100 pound, you can go lower if you want or you can go wider. I've never had a problem with the uh, leader. I usually run an 18 inch ish uh, fluorocarbon leader of 100 pound. 18 inches of uh, 100 pound or 80 pound, and then an arm length of 40. Sometimes, if I need to get down there deep and stay deep, I'll run like two feet of 40 and then run two feet of or a foot and a half 18 inches of the uh, bike guard so that's kind of my just for musky fishing that's kind of the, the flies i recommend if you're just starting out like i said try optima swine try uh the beaufort and single uh get out there and try musky fishing it's, it's really satisfying catching a fish on the fly that you tied and uh hunting for fish uh hope to see you guys in the water i know muskies uh, opened last week in ontario but I was in the hospital, so we're doing this today. Happy Fly Day. Um, if you have any questions or comments, comment down below for musky flies, if you want some musky flies, or how to tie musky flies, or where I got the information from to tie musky flies, let me know. Thanks for everybody's support out there. Thanks for your comments and uh, your likes and your watch on my videos. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you really like this video, hit the subscribe button. I'm Taylor's and Chasers. Thanks for watching. I'm out.